how in the world is this old machine actually working this well? Has the MacBook Air really gotten that much better in the last decade? Well, today we will find out because we have a 2012 MacBook Air right here compared to the 2022 M2 MacBook Air. And get this, both of them have eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD, which is crazy for 10 years difference. Not only are we gonna compare some benchmarks in real world applications, but I wanna see what is the difference in the speakers, the webcam, the display and connectivity. I think you'll be quite surprised with what is different and what might be actually similar or better on the 2012 version. Let's start out with the design. Now, I think it's crazy that this thing is only three pounds for a 10 year old machine. Steve Jobs pulled one out of the envelope. That was just a shocking moment. And even now it is so slim and lightweight. But with that said, the new M2, it is lighter at 2.7 pounds and if we take a look at the actual footprint, it is substantially smaller in every dimension. Now, Apple did finally get rid of that classic wedge shape, which is a bit of a bummer, but on the thicker side, the new M2 model is definitely slimmer and has a lot lower volume overall. We have a couple other major changes. Here, Apple was still using that plastic hinge instead of metal, and then of course, the classic glowing Apple logo. That would've been so cool to have on the new MacBook. And now let's touch on connections because this is where it gets interesting. Back in 2012, we had MagSafe 2. It worked great. You had the little LED that would pop up. Right now it's fully charged. And Apple finally brought that back with the new MagSafe. Of course, now we have this beautiful braided cable. Everything's anodized, so it's much more premium. But it's nice to see Apple change their mind and go back to that. Of course, this also has fast charging, which the old one did not have. Now, we also have a USB on this one. We're gonna test out the speed and a headphone jack on the left side, which is where I prefer it because I use my mouse uh, in the trackpad with the right hand side. Now, the MacBook has Thunderbolt ports. Those are obviously very powerful, but they are just on the left side. Circling over to the right side, look at that. Even the MacBook Air had an SD card slot, which was great and it was thin. The new one does not have that. We only have a headphone jack here, and then we have another USB plus a Thunderbolt port. Now, the new M2 MacBook Air, it only supports one display. The old one, 10 years ago, it actually supported two if you're connecting over Thunderbolt, and they also have a few adapters that can split that out. So it's crazy that we're more limited now than before. And now, what I wanna do is take a look at the inside. We know the new one is fanless. Let's see how much the internal design has changed. And look at all those screws. We have 10 of them and they actually use the same bit as the 2022 model, but that one only has four screws. All right, the screws are out, and yeah, you can literally just lift it up. You don't have any retentions or things you have to pull, so that's it. And look at that right there. We have a very clean design, a lot cleaner than I expected. Obviously, we have a fan, although it is a very small one smaller than the newer MacBook Air, so we'll see how that does thermally. We have a proper heat pipe here where our CPU and integrated graphics are. And right over here, this is probably the Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth chip. It's removable so you can upgrade your internet, which is great if you're buying an old device. And then we have our SSD right here. It's a standard M.2. Uh, and you could just unscrew it and upgrade it yourself. Now, as I mentioned, this is 256, just like this MacBook. We'll check the speeds, but you can actually put in up to a two terabyte if you buy a specific one, or you can do a one terabyte for a hundred bucks, which you can't do with the new models. We have a lot of battery packs over here, nice and clean, beautiful design. And we have these speaker modules that are massive. I mean, look at how much room it takes up. They're using all of the space that they can use. 
whereas now it is much smaller. So I'm very excited to hear the difference in the sound quality. Opening these back up, the first thing you notice is the difference in displays. Both these are technically 13 inch displays, but with the old one, we have these massive silver bezels that stand out like crazy compared to these slim, black bezels on the new one, the new ones that are all rounded. Of course, we have the notch there for the better webcam, which we'll test out in just a bit. Now below that, we have this classic MacBook Air, a little text or logo. It looks great. I wish Apple kept it on the new one. And with that, the display differences. I mean, this thing, is not nice to look at if you're used to these new Apple Retina displays. The bezels, I can kind of get over with, but I see every pixel here around all the text, all the icons, it is crazy. Now that is because we have a resolution of 1440 by 900, which is actually pretty good when it came out, but Apple stuck with this display all the way until 2018 when we got the redesign. So we have a difference of, I don't know, three and a half times the pixels on this display and here everything is gorgeous, very sharp, you can't see any pixels at all. Now the difference isn't only sharpness, if you look at the colors and the contrast, it is crazy how much better the new Retina display is. The 2012 all the way up to 2017 was using a TFT display that lacked contrast lacked color accuracy, it was very inaccurate, not great for photo or video editing. And in general, it was the main downside. Whereas with this 2022 model, it is now 500 nits, so it is brighter, and it supports 1 billion colors with DCI-P3 color accuracy. So it is massively better. I actually ended up downgrading in a way from the MacBook Air to the 12 inch, which was a lot slower for productivity in 2015 because of that display, I needed the accuracy. Well, before I cover the webcams and the speakers, I wanna talk about the keyboard and the trackpad. Now, some people were saying that the, this was the time of the keyboards. Apple had the best ones and then they made a lot of mistakes and that's true, but at the same time, the M2 has a way better keyboard. The actual keys themselves are larger, they are more stable, they're a little bit concave, and it feels a lot nicer and it's more accurate to type with the new one than with the old one. With that said, the difference in trackpads is even greater. This is before we had the magnetic uh, force touch trackpad, so it's a diving board design. It's easy to press at the bottom, much harder towards the top. And even when setting up this laptop for this video, I was getting frustrated with it because the new trackpads on the new MacBooks are amazing. They are a joy to use better than any other laptop out there. And lastly, of course, we have Touch ID, which makes it faster, easier, and more secure to log in and authenticate your Mac. And now I'm excited to compare the webcams and the speakers. Now looking at the cases here, we don't have speaker holes on either one. It's interesting to see that Apple went back to this 2012 design and got rid of them. Now with the new one, we actually have speakers right up here that fire up through the vents against the display. Whereas the old one, you guys saw the internals, they have massive chambers there, but they fire through the keyboard itself. Now I gotta say, I'm a little bit nervous to hear this out and hear what kind of difference we get, but let's go ahead and take a listen. Where are the mids in this laptop? We actually have surprisingly good bass. I wasn't expecting that. In the highs, they're not too detailed, but they are sharp, they're there, they're present. But the mids are gone. And with the new one, Apple really focused on a nice balanced sound. Uh, it's not much louder, but I mean, the difference is massive. And now let's compare the webcams and the microphones. This is the M2 Air's new 1080p webcam, which has been improved in a tougher situation. We have a window right behind us. And this is the 2012 MacBook Air's 720p webcam. So yes, it is 720p, which is crazy, 
but you guys can see it is struggling in this situation. Now moving into a more controlled environment, this is the M2 MacBook Air, and this is the 2012 Intel MacBook Air. Looks better because it's not struggling with that window, but it still looks pretty terrible. It also looks like maybe we're dropping frames here. And you guys let me know what you think about the audio quality down in the comment section below. And now I'm really curious about the performance. If you're gonna buy one of these for 180 bucks, that works and has the same RAM and SSD, how fast is it? Can it actually keep up with regular use? And what about some productivity? I wanna start out by testing the CPU performance. This thing has an i7 processor with a fan compared to Apple Silicon's M2 that is fanless. As I mentioned, both have eight gigs of RAM and let's go ahead and run this Geekbench 5 test. All right, wow, this thing is hitting 100 degrees in Geekbench 5, 102. That is higher than the newer Intel MacBooks. Those were capped about 95 and even 98, it would just slow down a lot. So these could get hot even in simple tasks. All right, we have a result and bam, that looks like a huge difference, at least on the surface. As far as the multi-core score, we have a difference of over six times higher or faster on the M2 MacBook Air. As for the single core score, it is actually a little bit less than three times more performance with the new one. You guys may have heard the rule where every couple years we're supposed to have a doubling in performance. In this case, that didn't happen. We had 10 years and it didn't even triple for single core. So I was expecting maybe a bigger difference. Now I'm curious what the low power mode will do for the M2 MacBook Air. If you didn't know, I actually did a whole video on the low power mode and how amazingly fast it ran for the little power usage that it had while staying insanely cool, even though it is fanless. We have our scores and the multi-core is four and a half times faster still, but the single core is only 60% faster. Uh, now, with that said, this Intel chip is pulling a lot more power. And if you didn't see that video, you have to watch it after this one. Now, graphics is where I think we're gonna have a much bigger difference because the Intel HD 4000, it, well, it was very slow compared to Apple Silicon where we had a huge jump in graphics performance. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay guys, it has been three minutes now and we have barely even moved on this progress bar here while our temperatures, well, they're getting quite hot and the fans are starting to spin up here. So thankfully we have Geekbench's site, so I'm just gonna look it up. All right guys, so uh, somebody recently ran it and we have a score of 100 compared to 26,158. I don't even know the multiplier of that, that is crazy. Uh, so we're gonna see how that affects real world usage, but from what I could see, you don't really wanna buy this Mac uh, for graphics tasks. The CPU isn't too bad, but graphics, man. Now we know that the base M2s have much slower SSDs than previous M1 models. So I wanna see how fast is this SSD? Let's go ahead and run this Blackmagic disk speed test. So this is actually not too bad. We have 383 for write and 448 for read. So we're looking like we're about three to 3.8 times faster on this new base model with the same capacity. Now I think I think the M.2 in here was probably upgraded because I think the factory, it was slower than this. But if you would upgrade to say that one terabyte for a hundred bucks, you would get closer to 500 for both of these, which is surprising for a machine that is 10 years old. Now I plugged in my external SSD and I'm surprised that the speeds are actually fairly decently quick too with our USB connection as well. So this is actually pretty usable even in 2022 if you're not doing anything crazy. I'm also curious about the thermal performance with this fan. It's an i7, but it's a dual core. So I have Synbench open and I'm gonna go ahead and run just one run of our multi-core test because I know it's gonna take a long time and I wanna open up Intel Power Gadget. And it looks like we hit a peak of about 17 watts right there. We're actually a little bit higher than that. 
it's kicking in even more so. So that looks like uh, the peak power that is used. Whereas on the MacBook, the fanless M2, we're over 20 watts. So this is a fanless machine that's more efficient running Apple Silicon and it's using more power. Now we're already at 103, 104 degrees here. Dang, these things used to get much hotter than the newer generation. I'm talking about like 2017 ones, 2018 ones. Our fan is starting to kick up, but it is still slow at spinning up compared to um, you know other Windows computers and other systems. So right away, we're getting some throttling now. And at the same time, our M2 is at 108 degrees Celsius, so even hotter and it's running a lot more power. Now, this thing will slow down all the way to about five watts if you're gonna be doing this for an extended amount of time. If you didn't see the video where we added a fan and we tested out a laptop cooler with the thermal pads, that makes it run at peak performance for pretty much ever. It was great, you guys should watch that video too. I'll link both of those at the end of this one. Our fan is now at full blast 6,500 RPM and that did actually allow the CPU to use more power and to speed up. But as you guys saw, that fan was tiny. So it is still running over 100 degrees Celsius in order to achieve this performance. It's running right about three gigahertz, which is a lot better than the advertised 2.0 gigahertz at the base. So that is quite impressive, running at about 18 watts. Uh, of course, here we have an eight core processor with those efficiency cores, and we already have our score that was fast and it's quite high. So I'm interested to see what we get here, running about the same amount of power, but a lot more cores 10 years later. Looking at the temperatures with our thermal camera, the hottest point seems to be 47, 49 right there at the top. So that is actually hotter than what we get with the M2 MacBooks. Now, some people say that these things get too hot, the bottom gets too hot, uh, but Apple's actually controlling these more so than before. We finally have our score and we have 1,385 compared to 8,595. So a difference of just over six times the performance. So since they averaged about the same wattage and ran at similar temps, that means we have an efficiency improvement of about six times over the last 10 years, which is quite good. Now let's take a look at some real world tests. Now, as I was setting this thing up, I was quite surprised that the web browsing experience wasn't as bad as I expected. Now sure, some things take longer to load, ads take longer to load, which is a good thing, but it just was fairly decent. So what I wanna do is test out our speedometer 2.0. This is gonna show us our web performance for things like simple browsing, open up different JavaScripts, apps, things like Google Docs, Sheets. And we have a score of 76.9. A lot better than I expected. This is actually not that much worse than my 2019 Mac Pro. Now the M2 machines, they are insanely fast. We're looking like about five times faster. You do notice that it's snappier, but this is still very usable if you wanna pick up one of these for a web browsing machine for 180 bucks. Now, as far as creative things like photo editing, I actually did photo editing on a MacBook Air that was not much faster than this 2012 and it was painful. As you guys could see, when you're switching photos, it does take a lot longer. I mean, here I'm already ahead. Each time I switch, this one is almost instant, even though it has a slower SSD, whereas this one, we have the little loading bar and then it adds in all the effects. And if you wanna use brushes, actually, <laughs> That is not too bad on this raw image. I'm pretty surprised. Uh, let's go back to just our standard corrections. That is not bad. That's better than Microsoft Surface X that they had. I mean, a few glitches, but not too bad. Now let's go ahead and export these 50 images. Our empty MacBook Air is flying and it's using both the CPU and the graphics. Whereas with the older one, it could only use the processor. The graphics are way too weak and it is taking forever to export. That was a painful 10 minutes and 11 seconds compared to two minutes and 16 seconds. So almost five times faster for the new machine. Now with that, if we would upgrade the RAM and the SSD, it would be about a minute and 16 seconds, a lot faster when it's equipped properly without the bottlenecks of the RAM. 
And lastly, just because I'm curious, let's test out some video editing using Final Cut, which is the most efficient for slow max. And here you guys see, we're probably playing back at one frame a second maybe, our CPU's maxed out, we're using the graphics compared to perfectly smooth here. Now of course we do have some effects. Let's go ahead and drop it to better performance, this lowers the resolution. Let's try this again. And that did not help. Now it's interesting that the quality actually got better of the video because this display has such low resolution but it's still so stuttery. Maybe I shouldn't even dare to want to export this, but let's go ahead and try. We are crawling along using only the CPU, no GPU, whereas the M2 is using mostly GPU and a little bit of CPU. Now that is of course because the M2 chip has really good media engines with encoders that make this very fast and it's getting close to done, whereas the 2012 is still at 0%. That is crazy. Our M2 is done and it has now been three minutes and we just reached 1% here. Now there's no way that I'm waiting for this to finish so I took that time for 1%, I stretched it out and it would take roughly four hours and 35 minutes compared to two minutes and 20 seconds. Now of course we are exporting the HEVC, that's what this footage is, all the new stuff is shooting that, it's uploading better with that. So I'm gonna cancel this and try H.264. All right, so that was a lot faster. We're looking at 26 minutes compared to the four hours or more compared to two minutes and 20 seconds. So still a lot, lot longer with that codec. Uh, it just shows you, you should be using that old one. And realistically for photo editing and for video editing, it's not really a great machine. But if you just wanna do web browsing and some simple tasks, what other machine can you buy that's 10 years old that is actually going to run properly, that can web browse decently? Uh, and I think this thing came with an updated battery too, so it's not dead. Um, it is not bad. Any Windows laptop would have choked and died a long, long time ago. So there you guys go for simple tasks, even just simple corrections in Lightroom. It did a shockingly good job, but when it comes time to the displays, the speakers, and any type of tougher productivity, we have a huge amount of improvement in a fanless machine here in 2022. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out those other two I recommended right over there. Click above to subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.